What's up, baddies, and welcome to another episode of The Good Energy Show. It has been so much fun just pouring my heart out to you all and talking about some of the reflections that I've been having. And today's conversation is going to be about good dads. But first, I'm your host, Rima, and I'm just excited to get into it, whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this in podcast form. Today we're gonna talk about good dads because it took me a while to really resonate with people when they talked about daddy issues. I did not have the traditional daddy issues that a lot of people have. A lot of people talk about daddy issues in the form of either an abusive father or an absent father or you know, all of the above. I'm not gonna speak on behalf of anyone's experience but my own today, but reflecting on my father and what an amazing beautiful presence he was it took me a long time because of my experience in most ways was so positive to realize that daddy issues can run both ways you don't have to have had an abusive or absent father for you to be deeply affected by your father daughter relationship and i actually want to tell you a story that kind of kicks this off a little bit. It is weird, so just brace with me, or bear with me, brace with me, lol. Um, so my dad passed away in 2017. I'm just gonna get that out of the way because it'll come up in this story anyway, but that's not the story. The story is in around 2018, I was meeting up with an old like colleague slash friend and her mom had recently passed and we were just kind of talking about that. And she told me that she went to this woman in ann arbor michigan that's where i went to school and that's where she and i also met so she went to this woman that's called a she she does this practice called reflexology so it's not quite like reflexology it's not like a massage but there's like some sort of spiritual element i didn't know anything about any of this stuff but it's coming from another woman who lost a parent and she said that she went to this lady recommended by somebody else who basically did this weird thing with her feet like it essentially was kind of like a foot massage but from that experience the woman was able to map certain parts of her feet to certain stressors or traumas that she was carrying in her body and even further from there tell her stuff about like how she has this fear that she's also going to um, pass away in the same way that her mother passed away through Alzheimer's and like it just turned into this very spiritual therapeutic session where my friend was just crying and like very shocked that this woman knew everything now if you don't know me I, I I'm very spiritual I believe in God I'm very close to all of that however I'm also very skeptical of things like this and I'm just the person that's like going into these types of things wanting to game the system or prove that person wrong or prove them out to be i guess like a scam or a fraud or at least i used to be like that so i'm like you know what let me try it i know i'm dealing with a lot after my dad passed it had been like less than a year at that point i was also studying for my gmat to get into the ross school of business which was like my top choice and during that time i was struggling with my gmat struggling with the math section specifically so anyway i went to this woman and i'm like i'm not telling her anything I'm not gonna tell her anything. I'm gonna let her ask me questions. I'm gonna let her figure it all out on her own. She's not gonna know anything about really what I'm dealing with and I'm gonna make it hard for her to crack me because I feel like she's just one of those scams, which is like, why would I even pay for a session like that and go in with that mentality? But that's besides the point. Anyway, I go there, nice older woman. She like, it's at her house. She's really sweet. She takes me upstairs and kind of like lays me on the like bed thing that she has and she starts telling me like that it's basically just a therapy with my feet and through that she's able to see what kind of stress I'm carrying in my body. So it's very much so like a physical experience. She can help me with my stress in my body. But she's like, and with your permission, if you would like, I can also tell you what that might mean about what you might be dealing with in your day-to-day -day life, but that's up to you. Like, we don't have to go there. I'm like, no, that's fine. Like, cool, whatever so she starts literally like touching parts of my feet and she's like you know your left foot specifically is carrying a lot of um water in it or something and i'm like okay she's like yeah that means that you're feeling like you're you're carrying burden and a lot of pain manifested in your shoulders and i have a lot of shoulder pain all the time i used to play volleyball i also injured my shoulder at a certain point so like she was spot on with that but i wasn't gonna give her too much so i'm like okay yeah cool she's like well 
is there a specific like stressor right now that's like become unbearable for you that you don't feel like you can carry on your own and I'm just like I'm not giving you all this so I'm like oh well I'm studying for my GMAT like I'm just stressed about that she's like okay is that it and you could tell she's just like that's not it I'm like yeah like the math section of my GMAT it's just really challenging and I'm struggling through like fixed mindsets behind my ability to do that so I'm kind of like giving her surface level answers and she's just like, okay. So then she keeps like touching my foot and she's like, well, would you like for me to tell you what this usually signifies? And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. She's like, when it's the left foot, it typically signifies a strong male presence in your life. So I don't know what happened to me, but as soon as she said that, I just bursted out crying. It was like a balloon. I feel like she just like punctured me like a balloon and I just exploded. And she's like, when, when you're caring that much, it typically, it's like the grief. You're grieving. So I just like start crying on control. It was like crazy. And she was just acting so normal. Like this woman clearly has people all up in this bed every day just crying. And you know, I don't know. Like it just seemed like it was a very normal occurrence for her. And she's like, yeah. The grief feels very fresh and I'm just sitting there crying too but almost kind of like ashamed because I'm like are you gonna say something like this is weird like how does she know all of this so I finally told her like okay my yeah my dad had passed away this past year and I'm struggling through that grief so we didn't really talk about it much the session ended up going well whatever but on the drive home I just could not stop crying and I'm trying to understand like what about that made me cry so much and when I look back on it, and I realized that that day, she kind of gifted me with the language that I didn't have before. Like I knew my dad passed away, but to say that my dad passed away was so surface, like that's not what I was experiencing. I wasn't just experiencing the passing of a father. I was experiencing the passing of, at the time, the only male presence in my life that I trusted. And for her to put it in that, that language, like you, you, it's the loss and the grieving of a strong male presence, it really made it click for me. Like, it's not just that he was my dad. It was what he represented to me. It was this masculine figure that I actually felt I was able to depend on and trust. Not taking anything away from the other men in my life. I'm very blessed. My brothers, my older brothers, amazing. My uncles, like I have such great, great, great male figures in my life. I just never felt like I could do the trust fall with them. And it's not because they wouldn't catch me. They probably all would, most of them would. But like, it just didn't feel the same as how it felt with my dad. With my dad, I felt like I didn't have to tell him what I needed for him to just know. So that brings me to this idea of daddy issues. Like why, okay, this sounds all good. Okay, we know he died, but like, what are the actual daddy issues? And I was having a conversation a couple days ago with a friend and this is what kind of sparked the idea behind this episode. And my friend is a, a new father, he has a son. And we were just talking about like parenthood and how we're trying to learn from our parents so that we can take what we loved or maybe leave behind what we don't think fits with our parenting style. And there's just this kind of fear that we were both expressing of kind of like messing up our kids or traumatizing our kids. And we were just talking about how important it is to be mindful about how you were parented so that you can take that into the next generation. And I realized that for me, my daddy issues come from constantly, like I feel like I idolized my dad and I feel like I put him on this unrealistic pedestal where there was this dynamic where I constantly felt like I wanted to make him proud. I constantly felt like I wanted to make him happy. And so a lot of things I feel like I was doing for his approval, not necessarily because I wanted to do it, not necessarily because I felt like it was the right thing to do, but for his approval. Now, thankfully, I had a very morally, like, a very moral per father. So there was nothing I felt the need to do that was like immoral or out of my own values. But still, there wasn't this sense of self-worth outside of what he thought of me and that can be very dangerous no matter who's on the other end of that i'll tell you another quick story that well that first story wasn't quick but this one will be quick when i first moved here i was hanging out with this one girl through, that i met through friends we're out to eat and she was talking about how 
she always felt like she was auditioning for love. And again, it's like sometimes when words kind of like stab you in the heart, you have to put a pin in it and think about it later. Like I'm trying to be present and listen to her. She's talking about her. Why did those words strike me like that? So I always try to reflect on it later on. And I'm like that, like I've never heard it phrased like that. And that's literally how I felt. When you think about an audition, it's like you need to perform. You need to always be on. You need their approval. Their approval is the only thing that matters. What you just did literally doesn't have any value outside of whether they liked your audition or not. And intentionally or on it, I think it was very unintentional, but I, I did feel like there was that dynamic with my dad. Like you always wanted his approval and to get his disapproval was the worst punishment ever in life. Like he didn't even have to punish me half the time. If I just felt like he was upset with me or disappointed in me, it was like a self-punishing mechanism. I would punish myself from there. And it created this dynamic where his feelings mattered so much more than mine, my whole life. Another layer to this dynamic, and you may have heard this in my Good Reputation episode, my dad was my principal. So not only am I coming home to this father figure that I love and adore, I'm also having to see him at school and represent him in that way. So there was a lot of pressure to be a good representative of him because again, his feelings mattered more than mine. And when you add a few other layers onto that, there was a lot of scrutiny on him because there's so much Islamophobia in America. He was one of the first Muslim leaders to lead both schools that he, he led, my middle school and my high school eventually. And there was so much, there was just so much like spotlight on him. And a lot of it was negative because again, people are racist and Islamophobic. So at a very young age, I felt this need to not just represent him, but even to protect him. It was this like a child protecting her parent dynamic. I felt like I couldn't tell him about some of the things that were being said to me by some of my teachers because I didn't want to add on to his plate or burden him. I couldn't even fully express myself or be myself because I felt like that would maybe make him look bad or I don't I didn't really know like I just felt like I was constantly protecting him even though he never necessarily asked me to do that and I mean he was protecting me too he was a great parent but I just feel like I was thinking about a lot of things I had this 360 view of everything that I don't feel like most kids my age at the time had to have so why does that matter now I'm in a loving, amazing relationship. I'm married. And it is affecting my relationship. Like, and not, not in any detrimental way, but I'm noticing these patterns come up. Because again, like, when you're young and you're kind of going through it, if I didn't have a serious relationship, there wouldn't be another opportunity for these patterns to show up. My dad passed away. So the source of that, the original source of those patterns is no longer really there. Of course, I think about him a lot. I still want him to be proud of me. And I've had to work through that in his passing. But now Ahmed comes in and I love and respect him and I want to emotionally depend on him. So there's like this new source that I can exercise all of these patterns on. And I realize like I'm constantly looking for his approval. And then I'm like, why am I doing that? Like he's not, he's not asking for that dynamic. He already decided that I'm a good fit for him and I should already just inherently know that I'm worthy, right? Why am I performing every day? Why am I expecting some sort of like applause or some sort of recognition every time I do something? And so it hit me like a ton of bricks where I'm like, oh, girl, you're doing this thing again where this is a male presence. This is another male presence in your life, arguably the strongest male presence you've attached to since your dad. So now you're starting to kind of recreate that dynamic. I mean, it sounds kind of crazy because like, why would I be treating my husband like my dad? But I don't think it's that straightforward. I think it's just the idea of a like the way that you learned about this male presence dynamic was through your caretaker. And now you're in another relationship day in and day out. And those patterns are ultimately going to come out if you don't work on them and be aware of them. So... I think it's like a lot to think about. Like I'm literally expressing this to you all as I'm learning it. And 
I'm at a place now where I feel like I've pulled myself back and I'm observing all of that. But it's astounding to me that I don't feel like people talk about re what I call reverse daddy issues. Like, I had such a good father. I had such a present father. I had such a loving and nurturing father. I also had a father that made me feel like his approval was the most important thing in the world. And that's just also the culture that a lot of us come from. Like, the approval of our parents inherently is honestly like a lot of times more important than our own feelings cool like I feel like I've made it through that pretty good like I have a great relationship with my mom I had a great relationship with my dad I am an adult I was able to do the things that I wanted to do even if it caused some tension sometimes with my parents but now I'm in this new relationship and I'm having to and I say new like we've been together for a few years but it's like it is still very new and I'm having to figure out how to grow through some of the unresolved issues that I had with my dad that unfortunately I don't think I can ever like resolve with him you know I have to resolve that with me and God because he's not here for me to resolve that with and it's just kind of this interesting like beautiful thing it sounds crazy but it's like I feel like God gives us so many opportunities to work on the same issue it's like this issue just keeps sprouting up and manifesting in new ways until we can use all the tools and resources and knowledge and wisdom that we've gathered to finally work through it. And I feel like the phase of life <clears throat> that I'm in right now is a phase where I'm learning to trust and I'm learning to also derive my self-worth from me and me alone. And I know that those two things don't necessarily seem related from the self-worth piece, I feel like that kind of solves 99% of the problem. But there's also the trust piece where I have to learn to trust another man the way that I trusted my dad. I have to let my relationship be as great as it can be by not treating somebody like someone else that they never signed up to be. And I felt like I was pretty conscious of that when Ahmed and I were dating like this isn't your dad he's not supposed to be your dad you and your dad low-key weren't even compatible stop trying to recreate your dad and a man because you and your dad used to fight a lot so imagine that in a relationship like our values were a lot different so let yourself have your own experience let yourself find someone that's right for you and work through that with them but I didn't realize how hard it would be how challenging it would be to trust someone that way emotionally trust to me is so much more than what i think a lot of us talk about we talk a lot about like well i can't tell him this because he'll do that or we don't trust their judgment i trust ahmed's judgment 100 even more than my own sometimes but emotionally feeling I, again i say the trust fall like i want to feel like i can fall and they already just knew to be there to catch me and that's kind of like what I'm working on right now. And I know that it's coming from me. Like I know that the lack of that is not the person I chose because I chose this person. There's a reason I chose them. They're amazing, right? But I'm realizing now that like, I kind of, I'm scared to do that because I've only ever had it one time. I hope all of this is making sense too. It's kind of like a stream of consciousness for me, but that story, I always go back to that foot lady. That's what I call her, like the foot lady story because the strong male presence in my life, I am grieving the loss of that. And I feel like part of grieving the loss of that is accepting that I can and will find it and find other like derivatives of it in other places and to let myself do that to let myself find that male presence in the person that I chose so I wonder what you think about this like I wonder what your daddy issues if you have them you might not have any daddy issues and that's great I wonder what that looks like for you though if you have experienced something like this where one of your caretakers whether it's your mom or dad there was some sort of like 
reverse side to things. Like it's not that they were absent. It's not that they weren't loving. It's actually that there was so much of it. And maybe that created a different type of dynamic. And I wonder if that's impacting any of your relationships. It doesn't even have to be romantic relationships. Thank you so, so much for listening. Comment below, letting me know what you think, what resonated with you. I love you so, so much, and I will see you on the next one.